Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Basilica from Portal Games. Basilica is a two-player area, con area control game. This is a reprint of an older title from Portal Games. I don't know the exact changes from the original. It seems to, at a high level, be the same. I don't know if there are changes or not. I have not played the original. I've only played this one. But like I said already, Basilica is a two-player area control game of building out a cathedral. On your turn, players are going to take three actions from three possible actions. But you're going to be trying to take those actions, and the specific actions you can take are you can either execute orders by activating these ability tiles at the top, adding to the cathedral that you're building by grabbing tiles and placing them in a five by, well, whatever uh, pattern as you add them to Cathedral, and then alternatively placing your people onto those Cathedrals in order to get that area control going. You can only place people down on a tile right after you added it, so there's a little bit more restriction around that. So for example, a typical turn will play out in which you go ahead, and for example, I'll go ahead and grab one tile, I'll add this to the Cathedral over here, I'll flip this tile down, you can see those arrows over there, I can add a new tile to the special tile row, and that was one action placing the tile, two action putting this person down. Because this tile has the Queen in it, we'll go ahead and advance the Queen Queen pawn, where once the queen pawn gets to the 10, we'll score the first time, then the second time, then the third time, and after the third scoring, you'll trigger end game of, well, Basilica. So, that was two actions. My third action, I can go ahead and try to add another tile to the cathedral, or I can go ahead and execute a special order. In this case, I'll go ahead and add another tile to cathedral, once again advance to the queen, and this is where I can add the tile to the left over here, or down, but again, you're building out a 5x5 five five row. So that was my action, went ahead and added those. And now the other players can go ahead and go through the process of trying to take their own actions. The other player will take their own turn trying to figure out how to uh, get in on my game. Now you cannot place wild tiles next to one another. These are wild tiles. They have two colors on them. So you can't manage that. But there are other tips and tricks you can do. So for example, this player can go ahead and try to add this tile over here. Hmm, that would be tricky. Let's say we try to go ahead and add this tile over here. We get our own little spot on it as well. Advance the queen as we go through it. This tile comes flipping down. We haven't really executed any orders yet, but that could happen. Ooh, this could be interesting. We'll go ahead and execute this order where we'll grab two tiles to try to mess up their building. We're going to add these framework tiles, which will kind of lock them over there, which will not be great for them. We'll go ahead and put a new tile out. So you have these options as you go through it. And that was, again, three actions. I placed, I put, and then I put two tiles down, and now to the other their player's turn. Again, back and forth as you try to figure this out, this game can be cutthroat and mean, we'll come back to that in the review part of things, but the other player now has to figure out what exactly they want to do, because they're they're kind of locked over there, they have other people, maybe it's just worth the points, we can call it a day, uh, they'll go ahead and try to start getting some more placement on the board as they figure out exactly how to get in the opponent's way, maybe we go ahead and add one of these over here. We place our own person down on it. This will come down over here. We'll place a new tile out. And then we'll go ahead and add this one over here. And this is just going to be just to obnoxiously lock them off because their own trap hit them. You're going to continue this process of going through the game. And as we went through this, we still only have three over here. The queen's over there. You're going to go through this until eventually the queen hits the end, at which point you'll score for area control in all the colors that you have people in based on who has the most. Now, this is before we get into the actual scoring aspect of things. Let's talk about a few more things that will happen over here. Different types of abilities, because we haven't really shown showcased what those abilities will do. But again, general process is you're adding tiles, you're putting your people down, and you're executing orders. The orders come in a variety of different types. Anything from adding tiles that will score more points. So you can add these stained glass windows to tiles that will increase the scoring. You can go ahead and put these tiles down, which will increase the value of stained glass on those windows. You can have a bunch of these options that add to the basic scoring of the game, but you also have tiles like this, for example, where you you can improve your own people. You're going to have your own little rows of different options. The players each have their own special ability tiles where they can add different things to the builders to do different things. So for example, you can add a times two thing, which will go ahead and double the scoring of a region once you put it under your person which is great, unless your opponent, of course, is in the same region as well. And they took the one, where, if I can find this over here, if they took the one, where, where is this one? It's somewhere over here. There's one, here we go. If they took the one, in which you can go ahead and treat one worker as two, which will double your opportunities to get into that. So you have all these different options. These are going to be scoring tiles. You have all these different options as far as different tiles you can add underneath your people to give them different abilities that will be from these tiles over here. There are other abilities, other orders that will let you manipulate different things, like putting other workers down where you otherwise wouldn't have been able to, to be able to move or shift other workers, and they have an interesting mechanism in the game where you can kind of see it on some of these tiles, where some of them have a coin option on them, and those coin options effectively mean that your opponent can do something as well, generally a slightly weaker version of what you did, so for example, this is you can add a tile underneath one of your people, and this is your opponent can pay you one of their coins to add a different thing under the people, so they're a little bit more restricted than you are because you got choice in that placement, but they give you the coin, and that means you now have a coin to spend, 
whenever they take tiles that have a coin cost. So basically players both begin with one coin. Coins will be passing back and forth between the players, trying to take advantage of those coin options, but understanding that by giving your opponent a coin, you are effectively giving them some degree of power over you at the same time, because they're gonna use that coin against you when they have an opportunity to do so. Whenever the queen hits 10, you'll go ahead and score all the colors over there based on the play people in those areas. And then you will wipe the first two rows over here. No matter what's going on with the cathedral, you'll go ahead and wipe the first two rows, removing them from play, everything else shifts up and you continue, which might mean you still have people or things or tiles in play, or it might mean you don't depending on how things unleashed. And that is basically Basilica. So let's talk about this starting off with ease of play. Rulebook is very easy to go through. This is the entire rulebook over here. We have, I don't know, like an eight page rulebook. It just is all you have over here. We have a gameplay, game start on this page, placing tiles. And then we have over here scoring points already. You're talking about the end game. And now you're talking about other things like, you know, the orders and the variants and other ways. Some of the tiles we showed are, are different things that are in the variant section. But you're basically putting tiles down. Very easy game to teach, very easy game to play. Uh, plays in roughly 45 minutes, the box says. Well, 45 minutes, yes. So that's dead on accurate. Uh, but overall, yeah. Uh, plays quickly, teaches easily, very easy to dive into, two-player area control. As far as my review, what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, first of all, tight area control. The game basically involves you placing pieces down on tiles to try to gather area control, and there's a lot of opportunities to be clever, and more importantly, a lot of opportunities to be mean in this game. This is a game where you are going to be messing over your opponent with single placements here and there. It does not take a lot to be able to execute a single tile, and then go ahead and trigger endgame scoring right after you completely butchered your opponent's plans, and just suck 10 points away from them, and in a game that doesn't really go that high in points, and you will cross the 30 point, you'll get to like maybe 60, somewhere in that range, depending on how well you do, but this is a game where you can absolutely butcher your opponent with a single well-placed move with a single well-placed executed order and the timing of that order and then triggering the scoring you can mess with your opponents which is both a good thing and a bad thing it gives you a lot of opportunities to feel clever it gives you a lot of opportunities to mess with people and it is mean and cutthroat but that has a downside as well which we'll talk about more on what i don't like Past that, the coin mechanism. I like the coin mechanism of trading off that extra degree of look at this extra thing I can do on your turn, but it comes with a degree of trade-off. Your opponent can now have the coin that he can pay back to you to mess with you later. And so you're trading coins back and forth, or if you feel like you have the advantage, if you feel like you have enough control, then don't give your opponent those coins. Control the coins, control the flow of the currency in the game so that you can lock in that placement that you have. There's a lot of chances to try to place and to manipulate and try to get things as you build out this cathedral. With only five people, it may not feel like there's a lot, that much area of control, but there is a lot of area control. And then the cathedral cutting out every round of scoring, cutting out two full rows, is a nice little, uh, almost a reset to the round. Doesn't matter how well you locked yourself in, you kind of have to re-earn things as you go. And it gives you opportunities as well to be mindful of trying to compete for the first two rows versus competing a little lower down might be a little bit less of a payoff, but it's a payoff that has more of a staying power, so that might be worth considering. And you have these all these different aspects you're trying to consider and be mindful of as you consider and compete for the, the building of this cathedral and your placement in that spot. As far as things I don't like in the game, biggest thing is the fact that those points, those order tiles and all the abilities and opportunities to be mean come with the downside that it does feel chaotic at times. Sometimes Basilica is a game where it feels like a single move, because I just said this a minute ago, a single move can completely destroy everything you've been working towards, which can feel frustrating. I like the opportunities to be mean. I like the order tiles. I like the opportunities this game generally gives you, but it does so almost at the cost of a little bit too much chaos. Sometimes it feels like the timing of where the queen is and how, so, how much someone can mess you over, the right well-timed opportunity can completely swing the game can be, I mean, again, a 10 point swing is effectively a 20 point swing in a two player game. And that can be the absolute difference between two players, between winning or losing in Basilica. There's a bit too much chaos, a bit too much opportunity for those larger moves that will mess opponents over. As far as I can see, I was not liking, first of all, uh, the church theme in general, which I mean, this is there are many games with lots of themes, but this is very much a directly religious theme, which may or may not be your thing. Uh, past that, it's very much an abstract. This is a pasted on theme, which almost directly contrary to the first point. This is both thematically what it is, but also it's very much a pasted on theme. It doesn't feel like you're building a cathedral. It feels like you're placing tiles on the board and then putting pieces down those tiles and executing abilities. There's no thematic integration here past, well, just placing tiles. And then lastly, what we talked about already, this game is mean. I don't mind the meanness. For me, the meanness is not an issue. I like mean. For me, it's the scope of the meanness that almost makes it feel sometimes like a single move can tank my entire game. And now I'm sitting here playing for 45 minutes because you got one move that decided who was going to win or lose. That's my issue with it. 
your issue might with it, your issue with it might just be that it is mean, that it is all about taking from your opponent. It is not about building your own thing. Yes, you're building your own thing, but it is far more about the opportunities you have to mess over your opponent, to take the thing that they were working on. It is direct, it is head, it is cutthroat, it is head to head. That may not be your game. As far as final thoughts on Basilica, I overall enjoy this one with that big caveat. For me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. There are a lot of fun things going on here. There's powers and abilities, there's area control, it's a tight game, there's opportunities to feel clever, but sometimes those, those clever moments are a bit too clever. Because of the scope of this game, if you sit there, if you have this area, you've put your two workers down, you have your times two worker, you've sat there and built out your stained glass, the whole area is worth 18 points, and then your opponent manages to do one or two things in a row that just happen to then trigger scoring, and now that 18 points are there, and it's a 36 point swing overall I really like what this game is doing with that small caveat that for a 45 minute long game having the entire game shift or pivot on one or two moves can be a drop frustrating uh, overall 3.5 out of 5 solidly enjoyable game with a lot of opportunity for strategy in it as far as other game recommendations uh, very similar games in the same gen general genre we have Carcassonne which is going to be another tile laying game that's a little bit less giant and swingy although there are times if you're building a big enough castle where you can absolutely have a ton of points shifting hands uh, but Carcassonne is going to be another tile laying game that gives you a lot of opportunities plays with two plus players although i believe two players is the favorite player count for it or the best rated player count but another tile laying game with a lot of opportunities to mess people over and feels more thematically connected and then additionally land versus sea is going to be a very tough very tight head-to-head -head area control game not really area control tile laying game of trying to figure out who can control the land the sea and there's opportunities to introduce third and fourth players as well but very interesting very fascinating game from good games publishing that will also give you that direct head-to-head -head feeling in any case and until next time i'm alex radcliffe from board game I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.